Good morning, and a very blessed Monday to you, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, wherever you're going today. May the Lord our God go with you. We're in the middle of the most wonderful subject, the subject of Christian love. We began it on Friday from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and we looked at the first three verses. This morning we look at the next four verses. And as you study these verses, you'll find that here Paul just begins to analyze what Christian love is, the way Christian love behaves. Now don't forget what I said to you. Christian love is the basis for Christianity because God is love. And Christian love has to be absolutely the basis from which everything else flows. If we have no love, we are nothing. If we have no love, what we do has no lasting value. So let's study this. Let's hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to us. And remember, He may say something to you that He's not saying to me. So listen in the Spirit. Verse 4 of 1 Corinthians 13. This love of which I speak is slow to lose patience. It looks for a way of being constructive. Now, first of all, if you have the love of the Lord Jesus within you, if you have the love of the Lord Jesus controlling you, you know the first thing is there is a patience in you because you love. If you're impatient, you just get impatient with people. You don't have that love, especially with other individuals. It may be that you're a perfectionist. You like everything right. Then, friend, you have a tremendous struggle with patience. And you need the love of Jesus flowing through you. But the second thing he says in this verse is, it looks for a way of being constructive. Now, you know as well as I do that some people are terribly negative. And some people within the church of Jesus Christ are terribly negative. And if they're always being destructive, there's a really good question if they walk very closely with Jesus. You see, if we walk with Jesus and share with Jesus, then His love begins to flow through us. And what comes out of our mouths and what is really helpful to others is that love that is constructive. Is that you? Is that how others find you? Is that why they rejoice to be with you? There's something constructive in you. And even if they can't verbalize it, it is really the love of Jesus. Love is not possessive. That's the love of Jesus. It is not possessive. It doesn't seek to hold on to everything it has. It shares because it loves. Is that you? You see, the more you analyze this, the more you have a spiritual barometer of really how you're doing in Jesus Christ. It isn't possessive. It loves to give away. Uh, my in-laws were very interesting in this. They were so kind to me. They were so generous to me. But friend, they wouldn't have been to you. Well, I earn my money and I don't share it with anyone. And what a lot of blessings they missed. It wasn't very long after we married that we found we had a little money. And it really wasn't from us. It was somebody who given us some money. And we were able to use it for other people. What a blessing this became. One of my friends was in a problem. He had electric light bills. And he was into all sorts of difficulties. And we were able to lend him some. We were in a church where we were working. And the church treasurer had taken some money and nobody knew about it. And we were able to put it back and eventually he paid us back. But the way the Lord blessed us, because we were not possessive and it was tremendously exciting. Love is neither anxious to impress, nor does it cherish inflated ideas of its own importance. If you love, you're not all the time trying to make others know how great you are. All you're seeking to do is to love. And you know as well as I do, there are some Christians who are always trying to impress you. How spiritual they are, how much they do for the Lord. Friend, just know in your heart they've got a little hang up and put them somewhere on your prayer list because they need your prayers. If you're really flowing in the love of Jesus, you're not trying to impress anyone. You're trying to serve the Lord. And it doesn't have cherished inflated ideas of its own importance it is not proud you see it's loving and pride is not loving because pride is exactly the opposite of the Lord our God 
Now love is the Lord our God. So there's no pride there. It doesn't go around trying to boast. And some people do. All these things begin to give us pointers. Verse 5. Love has good manners. It's interesting, isn't it? Some people are so well-mannered in the church, and some people simply aren't. They lack that love of Jesus, and does not pursue selfish advantage. If you love someone, you're not always trying to gain on them, and yet you know in the world there's some people, they're always trying to seek to gain advantage over you, and over this one, and over somebody else. They lack love. Love is not touchy. It doesn't get upset over the little things of daily life. It doesn't get upset over the things that happen in the church meeting, or what the board decided to do, or what's going on in the women's circle. It's not upset by that. Or you say, I am, friend. Do you lack the love of Jesus? Let him fill you. Let him flow through you. Let his love control your life. Love does not keep account of evil or gloat over the wickedness of other people. Have you ever found anybody who can still remember someone hurt them years ago? Even the person's died, but the memory's still there. And friend, they keep that memory warm. And they're not going to let it go. And it eats away inside. And they're committing spiritual suicide and maybe suicide of their health because they're so unforgiving. Love isn't like that. Love does not keep account of evil or gloat over the wickedness of other people. It's amazing the memory some people have for the evil someone else did. They're unloving. They have never really been filled with the love of Jesus Christ. They're still filled with their old soulishness, their old, old nature. And they need to be released from that. And friend, you're going to meet them, and so do I. On the contrary, love is glad with all good men with tr when truth prevails. It's not interested in the gossip. It's not interested in the evil. It's interested in the good, in the truth, in the wonderful things, in the things that are of good report. But not all people are like this. And always it has to be the love that cleanses, that purifies, that renews. You see, love is God and God is love. And if we really understand that, then His love begins to flow through us. What happens in verse 7? Love knows no limit to its endurance. It is incredible what love can put up with. You don't believe me? Look at the trials of Jesus Christ. Look at the cross. Seek to feel what he felt. Seek to understand what he went through. And he did it because he loves. Love knows no in limit to its endurance. It would just keep on loving. And that's so true. When you come up against a saint who truly has that love of Jesus, just filling them to overflowing, they put up with all sorts of things. Uh, some other people are short-tempered. They're very quick to criticize. Not the one who loves. They just endure. Next, no end to its trust. Now, I don't think this means that we're stupid. As far as I can see, the Lord our God says that there to be no dumb Christians. We are to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But love has no end to its trust. It really does trust others. Now, strangely enough, in this world today, it is not easy to trust other people. You know that, and I know that. And I think the Holy Spirit has to show us one or two things. I think sometimes the Holy Spirit waves a red flag to warn us that we've got a problem with this individual or this other person. You really can't trust them. It's not that you don't love them, but you're wise to the way they work simply because you walk with Jesus. Love has no fading to its hope. It knows what goes on, and it loves, so its hope is always there. And then, love can outlast anything. Love can outlast anything. It's the one thing that still stands when all else has fallen. Love can outlast anything. I think that's the most incredible statement because you see now we're back on God again. God will outlast everything because he's love and because love is God, these two are flowing together all the time. 
everything you know about God is love. Now, isn't that fascinating? You may be in a marriage where things are wrong. Hear the word of God. Love can outlast anything. Now, don't forget, in everything I've shared with you this morning, the love we're talking about. It's the love that you see flowing from the cross of Jesus Christ. Wherever you are at this moment, picture the love of Jesus Christ. Now, if you're going through a stop sign, that was a mistake. Look at the cross. Do you see the incredible love of God to you? While you were yet a sinner, Christ died for you. While you were yet a sinner, God's Son died for you. This is what we're talking about. And as you look up into the face of Jesus, and as you realize all he endured for you, hear these words again. Love can outlast anything. And in your marriage, whatever is wrong, love can outlast it. Supposing you have a child who's a rebellious child. They're getting into all sorts of things you don't approve of. Some of them are sins. They're getting into drugs. They're getting into sex. You don't know what to do. The Bible says you love them. You love them. You pour a love out on them. It wasn't very long ago, one of our ladies came to me. Her husband married her not very long ago. And he has a son who's living with a woman and this sort of thing. And they're not married. And this dear soul has the biggest problem with that. And I said, just a minute. The Lord our God has called you to love. Well, I don't know that I can. You know, when I thought about it afterwards, I had to wonder if she really wanted to. Where was her will in all this? Did she really want to love that girl? Did she really want to love that son? Or was she looking at the behavior and missing the people? And that's so easy to do. We look at the sin, we miss the sinner. Love can outlast anything. It is in fact the one thing that still stands when all else has fallen. When everything else is done, when everything else is finished, when everything else is rolled up by the Lord our God, He will still be here. Love will still stand. And you see, that's why it's so vital that the things you do and the things I do and the things we say are all done and said in the love of Jesus. Then the eternal value in those things will remain forever and ever. If not, they just have passing value. They'll come and go as we come and go. But it is God who still stands. It is love who still stands. And it's that love that I want to be in you, flowing through you, flowing out from you, touching every life that you know and every life that you see. And when we do that, God will be glorified. And that's why we are here.